Hey guys, welcome back. It's Mia here once again with another bookish video. Now I just finished A Curse So Dark and Lonely not too long ago before getting to this recording. And that ending had me spinning. I'm not going to tell you what happens because I don't want to spoil it for you. But let's get right on into the review. Now there are three main characters. Ren, the prince who is cursed. Grey, his loyal guardsman, and Harper, the girl brought from our world into the kingdom. And if you want to count her, the total witch, the L Lilith, the one who caused all this crap to happen. Now, right off the bat, this is one of the most relatable books I have ever read because like Harper, the main character, I too have cerebral palsy, where hers is in her left leg, mine is in my right. And there are so many times throughout this book where characters look at her and they go, well, she's broken, she's wounded, she's damaged. And she's like, no, I'm not. I'm not broken. I'm not damaged. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm fine. It's just, I have this thing called cerebral palsy which is where a birth defect happens when something happens during birth. Mine was the doctors were trying to hold me in when I was ready to come out. And I actually do, even though I don't know if I want to show them. I actually have pictures of me in my casts. There's ones where I had them on both legs because I had Botox done in order to make it right. And then they decided that my left leg was not ready to come out of the cast but my right leg was. So they put me in just one cast and that made the Botox pointless because I just went back up on my tippy toes like I was before the shot. And so to compensate for the weight of this cast, which is pretty thick, and that's how they got me out of it, they cut me out. Um. My right foot had to go right back on the tippy toes, making the Botox pointless. So then, after I got out of the cast, they put me in what are called braces. And I have a sock behind them, that's what the purple is, is the sock. And underneath the shoe, it's actually like I have another shoe on under there. And so I know what Harper is going through when she talks about the fact that she does have cerebral palsy. And I know people will say, well, there's surgeries you can have to correct it. And they messed up on the Botox. And that's the reason one of my legs is still messed up, is because the doctors messed up. I'm not going to give them a chance that will to mess up on something that will put me in a wheelchair if they make one wrong cut. I could lose use of my legs if they mess up again. And I'm not gonna give them that opportunity. I'd rather walk with a limp. So now that we got that personal bit out of the way, <laughs> I do live a normal life. I went to a normal school and everything. It's just, I have to figure out how to balance better and balance different ways. Other than that, I live a perfectly normal life, which is all good. So I really related to Harper as that, on that side of things. <laughs> oh my goodness, Harper is one of the strongest female characters ever. Like, the whole reason she ends up in this kingdom trapped by this curse is because she is out um, playing watchman for her brother because their mother has cancer and their father, before he split and left them, made a deal with a horrible person in order to get money to help with their mother's treatments. And then he bailed on them. So Harper and her brother are left with this mess of how do we pay, pay this psycho back before he hurts us? Because he's the type of person that'll come at you with guns blazing if he doesn't get his money. So her brother has to shake down people that owe money to get money in order to pay this guy back. So she was currently on lookout while 
her brother was on one of the jobs. And while she is on lookout, he runs into the king's guardsman, Grey, trying to kidnap one of the girls in order to bring her back to Rin so she can hopefully fall in love with Rin to break this curse that Lilith put on Rin and thus the kingdom. But Harper over here is like, I don't think so, Tater, and goes over there with nothing more than a crowbar, thinking that it's just some random creep trying to kidnap this girl, and beats the crap out of him. But instead of getting away, she is magically teleported to the castle. And she is understandably shocked, confused, and freaked out, as anyone would be. But because she fought back, and that was unexpected, because he normally knocks the girls out before he brings them back, she was fighting back and swinging the crowbar at Rin and swinging the crowbar at Grey. And Grey's like, this girl is crazy. She's going to beat me up. And I'm like... She has every right to beat you up. You kidnapped her. She has no idea what's going on, and she has no idea why. So I thought that was just so funny. She just, and kind of how anyone would react in that situation if they had a weapon, they'd be fighting back. So Gray doesn't trust her. She she keeps him so much on edge that he has to keep a weapon at all times. And the prince is like, oh, ha, 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 she scares you this much until she in turn beats the crap out of Rin, who was trying to like pull his manipulative crap to try and get her to like him. And honestly, I, <laughs> her attitude is perfect, but um, Ren, where in the original Beauty and the Beast, he was alone and was still nice as could be. A guy that actually has a kingdom to talk to and a guardsman, if he so wishes it, is a total jerk. Like, he is such a jerk. And I really just wanted um, Harper to get with Ren, or not Ren, Harper to get with Grey instead of Ren, because Ren was that much of a jerk. And a thing that bugged me about what Harper does, even though I'm giving this book so much praise, is the fact that she is only in the kingdom for six weeks before she is finally allowed to go back, because she finds out Grey is able to take her back to our world anytime she wants to. And so she ends up going back in time to see her mother die, sadly, and to find out how much trouble her brother is really in from this guy that they borrowed money from. And, <clears throat> and instead of staying there that in a home that has been her home for 18 years, she decides, well, I'll stay for a day, get this whole stuff situated and figured out, and then I'll come back. Like, girl, you were there six weeks, and you're already ready to throw your real life away. And it makes me even more upset because she actually tells herself, I will not fall for this guy, and I will not fall for his kingdom, and I will not fall to Stockholm Syndrome. She actively tells herself not to fall in love with him because of Stockholm Syndrome. Yet she does it anyway. And because she feels like, she acted like a princess in this world, and now she's got to own up and help them. And I'm like, it's been six weeks. <laughs> it's been six weeks. You're, you're going a little fast here. But yeah, that was the thing that really bugged me, was how fast she decided, well, I don't like my old life, so I'll just go and switch it for this one, even though they kidnapped me. But even though this book was... A Beauty and the Beast retelling, aside from the curse and Rin being a monster, which he's not most of the time, he looks human most of the time, aside from those two things, you would never know that this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling because it is so different in so many good ways and I love it. 
I love this book. I am so excited. The ending threw me for a loop. And I'm glad I have the second book coming in the mail because I'm like, where is this going to go? How is this going to change the story? Oh dear. And for the author, I mean, you're probably never going to see this, but I don't know if you have cerebral palsy or if you knew someone that did, but just thank you for painting our situation in such a real light and not just painting us on our worst cases or on bad, I don't know how to say it, or, or on bad opinions of us. I mean, yes, it's terrible that some of us have it so much worse than that. And I feel so bad for those who do have it so much worse, because mine's a lucky case. I, mine's a mild case. But some people's aren't. And it's good that people are represented in such good ways. And you do it so well. And just thank you for that. And although I'm a little biased because of that, I still give my honest opinion of this book. If I didn't think it was good, I'd say you represented cerebral palsy well, but the book sucked. Simple as that. But the book is really well done. I really like the characters, except for Lilith, who, who boy, who boy Lilith. I hate Lilith. And I doubt she's dead. Just gonna say that now. I doubt she's dead. Because she wouldn't be such a threat through this whole book and then just be dead that easy. I don't think so, Tater. I think she's coming back, sadly. Because oh, I hate her. She caused all this mess because a guy wouldn't fall in love with her. And she's an arrogant, stupid, bullheaded, freaking, oof. okay, I'm not going there. But yeah, I love this book and it was really well done. And I think I'm going to give it a five out of five. So, and the next book that has been calling my name since my aunt gave it to me with the other books was Angel of Darkness by Caleb Carr. So I think that's what I'm going to read next until the second book gets here. All right. Hope to see you next time. And this got a little personal for me, so I don't know. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that little look. So bye, guys. <laughs>